In the life of Prahlad as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a wonderful consistency to learn from. One of the most important qualities of a devotee is to be steady. Narada Muni describing his ecstatic symptoms of love for Krishna. And his father, Hiranyakashipu, was actually the most powerful person up to Swargaloka. In our lifetime, we have seen powerful people. But Hiranyakashipu conquered the entire earth. And it is described that when he raised a single eyebrow in anger, practically the entire universe, as well as the demigods, trembled in fear. What to speak of when he shouted harsh words. Sometimes when somebody gets very angry and they shout harshly, it really disturbs and upsets us. If we multiply that by millions and millions of times, we have Hiranyakashipu. Essentially, Prahlad Maharaj tells his father that because you are misconceiving your body to yourself and you are attached to your arrogant, ignorant sense gratification, you are no better than a person who is living in a deep, dark well where there is no water but only misery. You should leave this place and you should go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Krishna. Can you imagine? For Hiranyakashipu? But what's even more unimaginable is little Prahlad just said it without the slightest reservation simply because it was the truth. <laughs> Hiranyakashipu totally insulted by his own son. And he's on his lap. He took him off his lap. He told the teachers, Sanda Amarka, you teach him the culture that I represent. He must inherit my spirit. Sanda and Amarka chastised Prahlad. And here is where Prahlad was just so consistent. This was in many ways at the very heart of his teachings. That all of this education is about how to achieve in life, how to achieve. It may be fame, it may be money, it may be power, it may be um, sensory gratification. This is my friend and this is my enemy. A friend is one who helps me to get what I want. And an enemy is someone who stands in my way. And if a friend stands in my way, they become an enemy. That's material consciousness in a very um, concentrated nutshell spoken by a five-year-old boy. Prahlad Maharaj said, I am seeing everyone equally because I see my beloved Lord Vishnu in the heart of every living being. This is one of the primary teachings of the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, of the Bhagavad Gita, of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. To have this vision where we see the presence of our beloved Lord within the heart of everyone. And nothing could distract that steady conviction in him. Whether he was later going to be the most magnanimous, father-like king, or whether he was being thrown in pits of serpents and stabbed by spears by demonic representatives of his father. He was steady. He went to school. He appeared to really learn nicely because he was just so respectful. He never created politics. He was totally against this political kind of maneuvering of the mind. He was focused what will please my Guru and Krishna. Here's little Prahlad again, still five years old, comes before his father and his father lifts him to his lap, embraces him, oh Prahlad, tell me what is the best subject of your school? And in so many words, Prahlad Maharaj said, Father, because you cannot control your senses, you cannot understand the goal of life. <laughs> The goal of life is Vishnu, neither by yourself or with the help of others or both. You cannot understand the goal of life is Vishnu because you cannot control your senses. 
the only way you will understand the truth of pure unalloyed devotion to Krishna, the goal of life, is through the nine processes of devotional service, beginning with hearing, chanting, and remembering. Then Prahlad told Hiranyakashipu that unless you or anyone else bathes your body in the dust of the feet of a pure devotee who has surrendered to Krishna, you will never understand the goal of life. At that moment, Hiranyakashipu was angry as fire. We cannot imagine how he was screaming these words, kill him. He must be destroyed by any means, like thunder. And yet, you know, Prahlad, he was totally a well-wisher to his father. <laughs> but this is how he was a well-wisher. There was no envy. There was no fear. There was simply compassion. Such happiness. How can you disturb the happiness of a person like that? Nothing could shake his faith. Nothing could shake his compassion, his character. And the most difficult thing for Hiranyakashipu when he saw all this is even though Hiranyakashipu was screaming at him with thunderous blasphemies and trying to kill him, and Hiranyakashipu himself was about to try to kill him, he couldn't get Prahlad to even dislike him. Can you imagine what an insult that was to his ego? At least dislike me for doing this. But Prahlad was always just offering his obeisances <laughs> and being a well-wisher. And he was always chanting the, the Lord's names. Nothing would stop him. But then one day when his teachers went out for a break and the children were in a recess, they all gathered around Prahlad and asked, why are you so different than us? Because you have, you're living in the same environment for us. Where did you get this kind of um, information? And Prahlad, he spoke to his little five-year-old classmates. Such a philosophy that was understood by every single one of his classmates, and yet it's considered such a high, profound philosophy throughout the ages. He begins, now that you're little children, this is the time to dedicate our hearts, our lives to Krishna. So it really doesn't matter how long you live. It doesn't matter what is your age. Now is the time for God's sake. And he gave so many beautiful teachings. And his children believed him because Prahlad cared about them so much. They understood he is our dear most friend. And he, had, he made every one of his class devotees. They were chanting the holy names of the Lord. And when Sanda and Amarka came back from their recess and saw what Prahlad did, they were in great fear. They did not want to be blamed for this. So instead of being blamed for it by Hiranyakashipu finding out for himself what happened to the whole school, they brought Prahlad and it's not our fault, it's his fault. <laughs> Hiranyakashipu was so angry, so disturbed, so outraged. His eyes were like burning coals. His limbs, his mighty powerful limbs were trembling and Fury, and he said to Prahlad, he screamed at Prahlad, how dare you defy me? What and who gives you the power to defy me? I am supreme. The universe was shaking practically as he was shouting at Prahlad, where do you get such power? And Prahlad is just very gently and sweetly replying, my father, Oh, best of demons. <laughs> I am getting my power from the same place that you're getting your power, from Vishnu, from the supreme beloved Lord of our hearts. Hiranyakashipu was trembling more. 
You speak about this Vishnu. How dare you say what you're speaking? Where is your Vishnu? Where is he? Prahlad said, Father, he's everywhere. And he said, everyone. Is he here? Is he there? Is he up there? And then Hiranyakashipu pointed to one of the royal pillars close to his throne and said, is he in this pillar? It's just a piece of stone. Prahlad said, yes, he's also in the pillar. <laughs> Hiranyakashipu was so outraged. He said, then let us see if he will save you. He took his fist, his mighty fist, and with great force, he smashed the pillar, drew his sword, and attacked Prahlad to kill him. And now his father, in the summit of his anger, with his sword raised, is rushing to Prahlad to kill him. Prahlad was standing there with his eyes glowing with compassion for his father. And at that moment, the pillar began to tremble. And this extraordinary sound was emanating from a pillar. Hiranyakashipu stopped and looked at the pillar and was thinking, where is that sound? It was like a screeching sound. Where is it coming from? It started becoming like a roar. So out from the pillar came this form, half man and half lion. Enormous in size. Such an effulgence emanating from his body. His total Anger is being personified in this form, and he is roaring. And there was a very good battle. Sometimes Lord Narasimhadev captured him, and Hiranyakashipu, with clubs and swords and weapons and mysticism, he would fight and fight. Sometimes he would slip out of Narasimhadev's paws. He would go into the air and attack. And he was thinking, because he cannot hold me, that means I am more powerful than him. But the Lord kept playing with him like this in the form of battle until the sunset. Then he caught Hiranyakashipu. And right at the doorway, neither inside or outside, as just at the sunset when it was neither day or night, he put Hiranyakashipu on his lap. And he was neither a lion nor a man, yet at the same time he was both a lion and a man, and he was not created. <laughs> Narasimhadev, in tumultuous anger, he roared, and with his nails, he ripped open Hiranyakashipu. Just so that everyone would know that Hiranyakashipu would not bother them anymore, Lord Narasimhadev, pulled out his intestines. And Hiranyakashipu was very big, so the intestines were huge. <laughs> he pulled out his intestines, and blood was dripping and flooding everywhere. And the Lord placed like a garland of victory. The amazing thing, it looked so aesthetically sweet, <laughs> beautiful to the devotees. Because what's beautiful and what's ugly? He's all beautiful. And when he puts intestines on him, it's not just ghastly, it's beautifully, sweetly, irresistibly ghastly. But here is Hiranyakashipu, dead on his lap. Narasimhadev throws him off his lap like a piece of trash onto the floor. As one treats a devotee, that's how Krishna will reciprocate and treat you. It's very interesting because we spoke about so many instances where Hiranyakashipu, in his hatred toward his own son, he would throw him off his lap. When he wanted to get him killed, he threw him off his lap. And now here is Narasimhadev throwing Hiranyakashipu off his lap. And little Prahlad did what nobody else dared to do. The five-year-old child 
he walks right up to the gigantic form of the trembling Narasimha Dev. And he offers his prostrated obeisances and stands with his folded palms, as we see in so many of the deities of Prahlad and Narasimha. And being so attracted, Narasimha Dev placed his hand on Prahlad's head. And by touching Prahlad, at that moment, Lord Narasimha Dev became the personification of peace, tranquility. <laughs> and all of the loving attributes that we recognize in God. The most wonderful part of this wonderful Leela is Lord Narasimha Dev offering benedictions to Prahlad. Narasimha Dev, you have suffered so much for me. I'll give you anything that you like. Prahlad's response, my beloved Lord, if I ask anything from you, then I'm not a devotee. I'm just doing business with you. I don't want anything from you eternally. I only want to serve you and please you. Narasimha Dev was very insistent that Prahlad ask for something. Prahlad asked, let me always remember you and always aspire to be the servant, of the servant of your servants in the association of your devotees. And as far as my father, he has committed so much terrible violence toward everyone. Please free my father from all karma. Give him liberation. Such forgiveness. He's begging, if you want to give me any benediction, my Lord, after everything Prahlad went through, the only thing I'd ask is give my father liberation. And Prahlad said, as far as me, I don't want liberation. I don't want wealth. I don't want power. I don't want sensual enjoyment. I don't want yogic powers. I don't want even liberation. My desire is let me continue to take birth in this material world of suffering so that I can help others to find the joys of loving service to you. As long as any fool or rascal may be in this world, let me be there to help them to love you. Narasimha Dev gave him every kind of benediction that not only will your father be liberated, but all your generations of, of, of ancestors and forefathers will be and mothers will be liberated. So Lord, Lord Narasimha gave benedictions and Prahlad was made the king. We don't hear much about him being king, but it was just that, that time reference when he was in such crisis. Why is this so important to focus on? Lord Brahma himself, prayers to Krishna, one of the favorite verses that Srila Prabhupada and all of our acharyas would recite. Who is the rightful heir to the highest liberation of love of God? One who even in crisis and difficulty, with a grateful and humble heart, offers obeisances to the Lord, remembering the Lord, seeking shelter of the Lord. So the example of Prahlad is so important. That is why Narada Muni said when, when, when great souls speak, they, they also include topics of Prahlad. This was such an extraordinary, elevated pastime of loving reciprocation. We cannot imitate Prahlad. Mahajano yena gatasapata. But it is our foremost duty and the highest blessing that has been bestowed upon humanity, his values, his character, his faith, and how in every situation, easy or difficult, pleasing or painful, he was always taking shelter of Krishna. And that's why this 
day, Narasimha Chaturadasi is so important. Kali Kale Namarope Krishna Avatar. That same Narasimha Dev, Lord Sri Ram Chandra, Balaram and Krishna and Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. They have descended in the transcendental sound vibration of their holy names. And they have descended in the words and the sound vibration of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? To give us shelter. And how, how do we honestly and actually find shelter in the holy names and in the, and the association of great devotees? We learn from the great souls. But on this very, very holy day of Narasimha Chaturdasi, mm -hmm. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he taught us that we should pray to Lord Narasimha Dev to destroy the the enemies, the demons that are within our heart. So let us pray for the protection of each and every one of our family members, of all of the devotees, of the whole community, of the worldwide community of Vaishnavas, for all humanity, for all living beings, let us pray, Lord Nader Singh Dev's mercy come upon us so that we can approach the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath with true devotion. <laughs>